This tutorial will show you how to import the geometry of a spiral inductor into ANSYS Designer and then simulate it within the Designer user interface using the HFSS Electromagnetic Solver. You'll need to prepare three files before importing the spiral inductor geometry. First and most important, there's the binary GDS2 file containing the layout geometry. It comes from Cadence or another IC design tool. Second, there is an XML file with the layer definitions for Designer. It can be created in a text editor or exported from an existing designer layout. And then third, there is a layer mapping file, which tells Designer how to map the drawing layers in the GDS2 file, which have only numbers, not names, to the layers in the XML file. It has a very simple two-column text format with the GDS2 layer numbers on one side and the designer layer names on the other. Now we'll open up Designer. Uh, we'll insert an EM design into the project. And since we don't want to use one of the predefined uh, layer stack ups, we'll choose none for the technology. Now we'll create the layer stack up by importing the XML file. This can be done by clicking on the Edit Layers shortcut as shown here. Go to the stack up menu and then do Import XML File. We'll then choose the XML file and click Open. Notice how the dielectric and metal layers have now been populated. You can verify the material properties and the layer thicknesses here. You can also change them or even parameterize the layer properties in this dialog. Some warning messages appear here which we can ignore for now. Now we're going to load the GDS2 file. Under the file menu we go to import GDS2 and choose the GDS file that we want to import. After we load the GDS2 file, a dialog will open that shows us the GDS2 layers and names. Since GDS2 has only layer numbers, we need to map them to the technology layer names. The software has made a default assignment already, but we want to change that. This can be achieved by loading the mapping file we mentioned earlier. We can load this file by clicking Open under the Layer Mapping section here. Notice how the layer mapping changed in the user interface now. Now we see the layout has been loaded into Designer. A very nice feature of the tool is a 3D viewer that allows you to check the layout is correct. This can be accessed from the shortcut over here or in the EM Design menu. You can rotate the geometry, zoom in and out on specific areas, and pan the view. Anytime you want to fit the view to the screen, just press Ctrl D. Before going further, let's review the concepts of inductance and return path in HFSS. For current to flow, it needs to be generated in a source. That would be a port in HFSS. And then travel through the inductor and then return back to the source in a closed loop, as illustrated in this schematic. There are some tools that extract so-called partial inductances that don't have this requirement. But HFSS requires a closed loop. That's because HFSS solves the fully coupled set of Maxwell's equations. Maxwell's equations say that current must satisfy the continuity condition. It can't just appear or disappear from nowhere. So we need to model the return path for the current. This also means that the inductance we extract from HFSS will be a loop inductance, not a partial inductance. We show two spiral inductor examples here. In both of them, the user has to draw a physical return path that connects the terminals together. In the inductor shown on the left, this was easy because the terminals were already close to each other. And the inductor shown on the right has two terminals that are far away from each other. In this case, we had to draw a ring that can connect both terminals together and close the return path. The ring was made large in an attempt to minimize interaction between it and the spiral inductor. As a general rule, you should try to minimize the length of the return path to avoid adding extra inductance to the device. The example on the left is a bad way to do things because the long vertical arms add a lot of inductance. The example in the middle would be the preferred setup. In the example on the far right, the terminals are far apart and so a longer return path can't be avoided. You could compensate for this by de-embedding the inductance of the vertical feed lines. Now let's go back to our imported design. Since the terminals are close to each other here, we will draw a short metal segment to complete the path. We can do this by first choosing the layer we want to draw in. We'll use the same layer that the spiral is sketched on. Then we go to the Draw menu and choose Rectangle. And then two mouse clicks are enough to create the rectangle. And we can resize it then by dragging an edge. 
because we want to create two ports here, we'll have to add two little rectangles to this. You can do this by using the snap features to help size the little rectangles appropriately. And then finally, we can copy and paste one of the small rectangles over. The last step is to define the excitations by creating ports. First, we right click and choose to select edges. Then we choose the two edges for the port by clicking on them. Right click again and choose port create. That gives us our first port. We can then repeat that to create the second port. You can double check all the ports you defined under the excitation section here. We showed you how to import a spiral inductor layout from GDS2, define the return path, and create the port excitations. In part two, we'll show you how to perform the electromagnetic simulation.